seems like uh, out of all the topics we've all the topics we've been talking about, obviously the monkey one seems to be the more you know the pet that you can you know easily acquire as opposed to you know a tiger or any of these other species. So the reason why I had yeah. you come back was because I mean, you know the last time we were talking about how some of these monkeys can be very dangerous, especially when they were, for example, doing the photo ops at some of these minor league baseball games. And, you know, you mentioned how, you know, you, you people don't realize that you, you, any, any day that monkey can snap and just bite you, even at a, one of these type of games. And, you know, uh, but we had a lot of different comments on it's one of that, the posts that you and I are talking about. Um, yeah. I'd like to read you some of these comments, if you don't mind. This feels like a, a Jimmy Fallon, is it? When they they yeah. have celebrities read like mean tweets. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what they exactly. say. Because, you know, I've heard a lot. I've heard a lot of monkey mom saying, not mine. It, not my pet. Sure. You know, not my chimpanzee. And uh, sure enough, it often is that one. You know, like it's. we. So there's a quote that some, one of my colleagues once said that a primate bite or in this case, let's say a monkey bite is yeah. not an if, but a when. When it's going to happen, mm -hmm. right? If it hasn't happened yet, expect that it will. Right. Because these are wild animals; they are not domesticated. So right. let's hear what people have to say. I'm curious. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go from the latest one. All right, and then we'll we'll move back down. So we have um, from Inspire seven thirty seven thirty four. So they say uh, they are not pets; they are companion animals. Uh, you have to know their language. If they are agitated or not well, they can be aggressive. To people in their troop, they are all right, but outsiders, they fend off. That is their nature. You need a special type of indoor-outdoor enclosure for them, which can be very expensive. I agree with some of that, okay. for sure. Yeah. This person sounds like he or she has monkeys and at least has something that sounds like an appropriate enclosure. So... At sanctuaries, um, you know, when sanctuaries take in a pet monkey it's be or a monkey, it's because that animal has has nowhere else to go. We can't release them into the wild sure. because monkeys from the pet trade and from all other sources in captivity, like lab research or entertainment, they've never been in the wild. So so they have to stay in captivity. It's just an unfortunate truth. Um, but but a reputable sanctuary and accredited sanctuary will have indoor and outdoor access for the animals. Right. And they prefer both, right? So if sure. it's too hot or too cold or too windy or whatever, raining, the animals can go inside, they can sleep inside, but they can go outside when they want. And it's all about choice. Right. So, you know, if a, if a monkey has to live in a human home, yes, I do prefer they have an enclosure like that person described. Okay. But I can't tell you how many times I've heard someone say, you know, my pet won't attack my family right it, they do i mean i just i don't know what to say but they do and if you know a lot of times people will remove the teeth of a pet monkey which is horrific to begin with but yeah. also impacts the types of food that animal can eat for the rest of its life yeah. you know it would not be species appropriate food for sure right um and it doesn't solve the issue of the mental anguish that this animal that we can assume this animal must be feeling that would cause him or her to bite those around him. Right. Um, so, you know, that's a, a statement. I, I would disagree that that monkey is, you know, not going to lash out at the family because monkeys in the wild fight sometimes too, you know, whether sure. or not that monkey considers the humans to be his or her family. I don't know. Right. I can't say that, but, um, but I know that a human home can't meet, the mental needs of a monkey they need to be with other monkeys yeah that's true so i'm wondering that's if when they mean by companion animals as in companion animals with other monkeys or i'm guessing she's meaning maybe more with humans you know they i don't know if that person's referring to like an emotional support animal mm. um okay but i know that monkeys are no longer considered to be emotional support animals i know you know the americans with disabilities act does not recognize that i know that the veterans affairs office does not fund that um a lot has changed in the last i don't know 20 years on that topic okay so um that is also not a viable you know not, it's not an appropriate use for monkeys sure. from the experts opinion right okay yeah. so uh let's see 
we have another one here. Uh, well, this one's a little... I don't know if it's actual... Stay, this one's just... Monkey Bites, the end of story. If you don't like it, stay away. Nobody force anybody to be around monkeys. Okay. Uh, okay, but so the monkey to be around humans that's my problem <laughs> exactly so then he replies back again and says, uh I, i'm guessing they're referring to you and i here um okay these people have no idea what they are talking about they never own the monkey i call those people right. a hypocrite i own Rishis maca past two years i did raise him from tiny baby i can speak out of out about monkeys behavior but not those clowns who observed a little bit out there and they believe they are experts nah clowns nothing else okay so this person has a rhesus macaque which is a pet that is pretty common in the pet trade yeah they're also very common in lab research um and these types of monkeys um have strong you know have big teeth <laughs> yeah i would not want to handle such a monkey um, they also can naturally harbor a, um, a virus called herpes B oh. that can be fatal in humans. Interesting. Um, they, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing that will not make the monkey sick, but it can be shared through bodily fluids, right. um, and can be very dangerous to humans. And it's, it's honestly shocking how many people don't realize this and they handle macaques, you know, in their home as a pet. Wow. I did not know it. I, I mean, I know some, a lot of monkeys carry diseases very close to us humans because we share very similar DNA, but I didn't know about this specific uh, mm -hmm. disease. So, they, so, so, so somebody can per potentially own one of these or have one of these at home and get um, the yeah. get get herpes B. You said herpes B. Yeah. So wow. it, it can be spread through like like fluids. Like if the yeah. if the animal you know, spits or urinates or something, you know, and you sure. somehow get it in you. Yeah. It's it's potentially very dangerous. Wow. It's not the most you know, it's not like a, a frequent cause of death amongst humans, but it, the right. numbers of people who have contracted it, the rate of death is rather high. So yeah, it's a it's a concern. And that's one reason why we also don't want to see monkeys used in like public events, you know, because because the general public who is is not aware of this type of thing. I mean, I would hope if someone has this type of animal as a pet, they would be they would self educate, but oftentimes they don't. I mean, um, I, I would think this would be the the that main point of of educating people I'm like make sure you don't pet these monkeys because they might have herpes i think that would well, yeah. potentially stop people from nowhere getting near even near them <laughs> not to mention they're you know they're very um agile and quick and the the bites can happen like this it's not oh, yeah. um it's not a slow process to be bitten by a monkey it comes out of nowhere i've seen it um I've exactly seen it. Right. i've seen it I firsthand mean, it yeah, yeah yeah and i mean this this person who wrote in is correct that you and i have not had pet monkeys nor do i want to but i yeah. i promise you i've seen them come to sanctuaries enough and i've received the phone calls from the people who have you know an emergency and desperately need to give up their monkey because they can't take care of him or her or they're scared of him or her right um and I see also too the backlog of, you know, all these sanctuaries have a wait list because they can't meet the demand. So, right. you know, you may have, you may decide that I'm gonna get a pet monkey and I'm mm -hmm. gonna care for him or her as long as I can. Okay. And then I'll just send him to a sanctuary. Well, you often can't do that. Right. And it costs money to do that. You know, like yeah. sanctuaries have to physically expand to take more. Do you have the funds to have a sanctuary build an enclosure? Most likely no. No. Um, there's a lot to consider and a lot, you know, people don't realize that. Yeah. Cause it's, it's, it's not just building a little tiny, you know, a couple, four walls here for like a, you know, a canine or something where, you know, that's pretty easy. You know, he's not going to jump over a six foot wall or I mean, you have to build an entire enclosed habitat that goes from indoors to outdoors. Like you mentioned, because these monkeys sometimes, I mean, if, especially if they've been raised from in home, they have mm -hmm. to have that indoor area because some of them just feel sick more secure and you know in, in inside those areas i've seen i've witnessed it myself uh, but yeah i mean these habitats are not cheap i mean I, it, they're in the tens of thousands of dollars oh yeah and and monkeys are very you know primates in general have very complex needs very expensive needs and they have very long lifespans yeah so you know getting a baby monkey is a commitment of many decades to that yeah. animal right um or it should be i should say yeah um, and, and yeah. let's not even mention the primates i i mean right. imagine building a, a chimpanzee uh, habitat 
you i mean you have other than having to have acres and acres of land mm. uh there's also not that many sanctuaries that take uh big primates like this too no oh, absolutely and i mean chimpanzees are a whole different you know sort of topic yeah. um both in terms of the dangers they present as well as the funds required to build for them. Um, right. We're in the process right now of rescuing chimpanzees from a wildlife refuge in Los Angeles that shut down. I know you and I talked about this on the last podcast too. We, we did. And, um, I mean, it's millions of dollars yeah. to take in a group of chimpanzees. So, yeah. so this is no small, no small thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I, I, I can assure this person that, you know, well, let me let me say this. I think when someone has a pet primate, hopefully they bond with this animal and feel love for that animal and want to care for that animal. Sure. Which is one more reason why it's important when they do need to be rehomed to house them at a good, trusted sanctuary. Right. Because what I also get scared of is seeing them either put back in the pet trade yeah. to breed and produce more. Mm -hmm. and contribute to the problem right or to be sent to a place that does not provide appropriate care where the animal is going to suffer you know not receive vet care or be used in some sort of exploitive um, money-making scheme like as a photo prop or you know right. performing or something like that so there's a lot to consider yeah yeah i mean in a lot of research too because most of them can tell you that they are good and you end up finding out in the long run that that they're not a good sanctuary well, exactly. And so if anyone has questions about how to how to identify a true sanctuary, yeah. um, NAPS's website is primatesanctuaries.org. Maybe you can share that in the I notes will. or something. Yeah. And um and we have a, we have documents on there for how to find a true sanctuary. Good. Because there are facilities out there that might use the word sanctuary but engage in practices that are not best for the animals. Good. So, it's very important to educate on that and you know, we can always help with that if someone has a question or wants to wants to find a home for their primate. That's what we're here for. Okay. But we're also here to stop to stop the problem at the source so that we don't want to have to exist. You know, we don't want sanctuaries to be needed, honestly. Yeah. They they're an emergency response to a problem. Right. No, it's so true. And yeah, no, mm -hmm. absolutely. And if anybody is listening to this and it is a monkey owner and wants to, you know, retire their monkey at a sanctuary, please do contact NAPSA and they can help you out for sure. And the sanctuaries really are um, experienced in talking to the owners of monkeys. We understand the concerns. Right. We understand, you know, all the emotions involved in that. And we, we are here to help the monkey. So mm. please know that. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to the next one. Let's see what we got here. Oh boy. <laughs> uh this one's from rivers and outdoors uh let's see so monkeys can be pets all animals or wild or exotic at one time they have found monkeys with collars on them in a pet graveyard at the pyramids the number of people who have been injured by monkeys is a very small number compared to dogs there is a there is dangerous breeds of dogs that people think they need to own and they can be very aggressive to them uh well, sorry hold on let me uh, uh be aggressive oh sorry so to the own there they can be very aggressive to their owners or their neighbor's kids just compare the number of deaths by dogs and monkeys and see yourself see for yourself monkeys are comparatively harmless you just need to give them their space people have been bitten by their parrots myself included all animals and pets can be dangerous, even so-called domesticated animals like cattle. They can run right over you and kill you. The monkey issue is a dumb issue. If a person can own a 180-pound pit bull that will eat, your, eat granny next door, why can't responsible pet owners have monkeys? I believe some dog breeds should be banned because of the danger of having them. You can't even own a ferret, so what is the deal here? It makes no sense at all. That was a long one. That's a lot to unpack. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm not a, I'm not a dog expert, <laughs> but yeah. I am confident in saying that the number of dogs living in human homes far out is, is a much greater number than the number of monkeys living in human homes. True. True. So there will be more. There will be more dog, dog bites. Attacks. Just right. Just on a, you know, right. percentage. 
Right. Okay. So let's, with that in mind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah. these pets have been, you know, they've been found in graveyards in the pyramids. So obviously it seems well, like. Well, sure. I mean, humans have done terrible things for a long time. It doesn't mean we should keep doing them. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I... <laughs> I'm not going to get into all that, but there's a, there's a lot that humans have done since Egyptian times that we shouldn't be doing. Right. Exactly. Um, but, you know, I, so, okay. It sounds like this person is talking about the human, um, cons- maybe the human related concerns about keeping monkeys as pets. Yeah. And, and, and those are important ones, but then they're, they're not considering the animal welfare concerns and right from what is appropriate, what is an appropriate life for a monkey and experts unanimously agree. It's just a fact that monkeys naturally live in groups of other monkeys, right? They're social primates are social beings. Yeah. Um, and that's very important, not only to their, um, their mental health, but their physical health. Like they, they groom each other. They communicate with each other. They're very emotional, social beings. Right. And so that's just one reason why, um, you know, monkeys should not be in human homes. A human is not a replacement for other monkeys. Um, when, when humanized like that pets arrive to a sanctuary, they're often the, the hardest to acclimate um, to living amongst other monkeys because oftentimes they've never seen another monkey True. except maybe when they were born and taken from their mother. Yeah. Um, but they don't know how to communicate like a monkey and talk monkey and, you know, interact with the others and share food and do the types of things that monkeys would normally do. Right. So it's it's really sad because they don't, you know, they're not human, but they're not monkey. They're kind of stuck in the middle. Yeah. And, and humans have created that yeah. for no reason. Yeah. No purely selfish reasons, right? Mm-hmm. Monkeys you know, I'm not a monkey. I can't read their minds, but I don't think they want to live in a human home. I think they want to be with other monkeys, just like you and I want to live with other humans and not go live in a monkey home. You I, know? I, yeah, it's, I agree. I mean, I, I can't imagine um, the monkey being able to climb up trees here in my apartment as it would out in the wild yeah. and be able to jump from branch to branch, you know? There's uh, no replacement. And we, we say that sanctuaries are the next best thing to life in the wild, but we fully admit, you know, monkeys should be in the wild. They, they should. shouldn't be in sanctuaries, but yet they have to, because here we are, we have this problem and they have to go somewhere. Right. So we make their life as good as we can, um, you know, compared to life in the wild, but it's not the same. Yeah. No, because and, people say, and like, well, why can't you just put them out in the wild? Well, you know, they can, can't fend for themselves. They don't know how to how to go get food they don't know what tree to eat from they don't you know they don't know what's poisonous what's not and they don't even you know monkeys would not live uh, in 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 this in north america naturally no like, they wouldn't so we're not going to be shipping <laughs> shipping former pets over to asia or something to go live in the wild it's just not feasible no and not including like you mentioned before i mean monkeys have a lot of diseases so that would be yeah really bad well, yeah. And, you know, so they we can spread diseases to them. They can spread diseases to us. Yeah. And it's not just the herpes B I talked about. It's it's tuberculosis. Um, you know, there's even the thought that COVID is most likely able to spread between humans and non-human primates. Yeah. Um, there have been a few instances, you know, thankfully nothing majorly widespread, but it's, you know, we've seen COVID show up in other species that are not as closely related to, to humans. So we would think that other primates could certainly get it and share it just like we can. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen COVID hit some of the tigers, uh, as, exactly. as we saw, uh, That's so true. some gorillas now that I think about it, there and were the, some primates. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, very interesting. Um, well, yeah, there's just so many concerns. And so I keep coming back to, so the reason like why it's it's just because humans have this selfish need to own things yeah. Yeah, right. right yeah absolutely and it's a, something that i i explain to and it's not just for example just the monkeys for example and it it comes to uh making your 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 dog a fashionable accessory you know where right. you're gonna go out and get this specific species of dog even though you know they're probably it's probably not the best breed you should be uh breeding for example i'm talking about like french bulldogs for example to have right. a lot of health issues and they're right. you know can't breathe they can't yeah. breathe it's just a, just a 
you know, it's it's not a really it's not a good dog for you to be to owning and to to breed anyways. And it's becoming such a trend and it's such a fashion thing right now that it's gonna help. Same thing is gonna happen with like with the whole Taco Bell commercials that happened a few years back with mm-hmm. the Chihuahuas, and we got a huge influx of Chihuahuas at the at the shelters. Yeah. Same thing's yeah. gonna same thing's gonna happen. It's like these people become they. We need to stop making animals uh, into a fashion accessory. We need to stop thinking about that. You know, and I talk to people about, for example, even doing when they do like elective surgeries on dogs and stuff like that. I'm like the dog didn't ask mm-hmm. you to clip his ears or his tail. This is all you. It's all my me, 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 because I want it to look cool and I want it to be fashionable to to yeah. me. So that's something that people need to realize that it's 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 a selfish mm-hmm. act. It, it's well, not yeah. beneficial to and the you animal. Know, there are studies that when chimpanzees are used in entertainment, you know, when we see them dressed up and yeah. acting like a human and putting on a suit and, you know, playing an instrument or whatever it might mm-hmm. be, there is a direct correlation between humans thinking that they would make good pets. Yeah. Oh, you know, you hear, oh, I want one. Yeah. There is a direct correlation to that. And there's studies that prove this. And that's one reason why NAPSA and other experts are against the use of primates in entertainment. Yeah. And that includes, you know, that includes monkeys. That that relates also to that whole social media thing we talked about, about yeah. seeing them handled by humans makes people think they should be handled by humans. Right. And they don't understand the difficulties of that. And that maybe right after that picture was taken, the monkey freaked out and bit someone. Right. You know? Exactly. Um, you don't see the reality behind it, unfortunately. Right. And, and you also don't see how that animal changes over time. You know, like when chimpanzees are used in entertainment, they're they're infants. They're yeah. very very young yeah. because that's the only age at which they're tractable and you know can be can be managed. Exactly. And people don't understand that, and why would they? Unless they're unless they learn about it. Of course, that's not common knowledge. It's very so, true. Yeah, because after a certain amount of months, they're gonna they become very aggressive. Perfect example: mm-hmm. uh, Michael Jackson and his chimp. He didn't mm-hmm. have just that one mm-hmm. chimp. He had one every four or five months or so uh, to keep it into a little baby. And what happened to all those chimps? Ended up in sanctuaries. You know, Bubbles is Bubbles. at Center for Great Apes. You I, know, with I have his, met him. With yeah. yeah. So, you know, we it's it's sad. These are you know quote beloved pets that were just sort of discarded. Yeah. And I I see it all the time. Yeah. This is not a rare occurrence. I can't, you know, so just to give you an idea, mm-hmm. within, um, in 2021, NAPSA had about 90 requests to house wow. primates at our sanctuaries. 90. Primates? Yes. N- not monkeys. Just so not just monkeys. Wow. And are yeah. these private, private ownerships or laboratories as well? It's a mix, mostly private owners. Um, there are a few lab placements in there, and that also doesn't even include the request that bypassed me and went right to the sanctuaries. Because right. some, sometimes that happens; it doesn't all go to me. Sure. Um, but but you know, of the ones that I fielded, there were there were ninety, and the vast majority of those could not um, did not work out yeah. for whatever reason. Whether the owner didn't have the money to make it happen, because the sanctuary needs care funds or construction funds or whatever it might be it it varies by sanctuary sure um and by species yeah um or it could be because sometimes the owners change their minds which is the worst i can't tell you how many times i've actually found a solution and then they change their mind or they hold back yeah Um, we had one one in the last year where the owner uh, was reluctant to place his beloved pet and then he unfortunately contracted COVID and got very sick so the family got the pet out um, and so it ended up being okay for that monkey, but, um, you know, it's just very unpredictable and, you know, as the owners age and as, um, maybe the family dynamics change, like it can quickly go from a pet that people think is, um, manageable to one that is not. And then what do you do? Right. Um, and we feel bad for the animal that's stuck in all that, of course. Yeah. I mean, they get stuck in limbo and yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine there being 90 primate sanctuaries here in the U.S. Maybe there is, but... <laughs> There's I, not. I, I don't think there <laughs> is. Not. Yeah, it seems like it would be multiple ones in each state, and I know for a fact there isn't. <laughs> no, no. So NAPSA right now has nine member sanctuaries. And, of course... There's other good sanctuaries that are not in NAPSA, but that are still very trustworthy. Sure. Um, but there's not, it's not like there's 50 more. I mean, maybe there's nine others, you know, it's not many. 
Right. And and some of them are only chimpanzees or some of them, you know, so they, they don't all take in monkeys. So you can imagine how there would be a wait list to right. house right. To, to get monkeys into sanctuaries. It's very challenging. Yeah. On top of the having to do the fundraising to build a new habitat for that one. So I can. Yeah. I, I you can imagine how many months and months and if not years of a waiting list. Well, yeah. And true sanctuaries, you know, are nonprofits. Yeah. They don't um, they don't allow the public in. So there's no ticket sales. There's no revenue. They exist purely to take care of those animals. So, um, you know, that's one reason why they don't have unlimited funds to just sure they want to help as many primates as they can. But they have to be smart and limit it be, so that they can stay afloat and keep doing what they're doing. Right. Absolutely. So it's a delicate dance there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we got any more of these comments here. Let's see. All right. So this is from Faye Kramer. Uh, mm -hmm. Monkeys are hideous, screeching, biting creatures. My cousin had one, and when I reached out a finger, the bleep bit me. I wish I had a. I wish I had punched it in the mouth. They are not fit to be pets. I agree with most of that. <laughs> I don't know no one should be, nobody should be punching it. <laughs> no one should be punching any primates, human or non. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they are not happy in human homes. They are not domesticated. They, right. And you know, that's something I wanted to bring up with that other comment about that related to, to dogs. Mm. Um, dogs are domesticated, yeah. right? Cats are domesticated and have been for a long time. Absolutely. Monkeys are not. No. Monkeys are not. So that's an important distinction to make. Um, they are wild animals and they will stay wild and they act that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. No matter how much you want to domesticate them, even if you get them from babies, they still have those wild instincts. I mean, even yeah. good just goes for, for example, like I just had a, another podcast where we talk about wolf dogs and it's sort of the same issue because they have that sort of wild instinct, not every single one of them, but if the genes still happen to be a little bit stronger on the wild side, you're not going to have that domesticated, you know, friendly dog in your house is you're going to have more of a wolf type of dog and and then what happens again we have to yeah. look for sanctuaries to place those dogs because that certain person wanted a dog to be fashionable to their personality you know sure and it's heartbreaking to think about the animal stuck in that because they're not able to express their natural behaviors they're trapped right and at home i mean think about what a wolf or what a monkey think about what their natural their day would look like in the wild they would be traveling over huge distances yeah. outside you know engaging with others eating on their own natural schedule like they wouldn't be conforming to anything human right and um and it's just heartbreaking to think about them having to live lives like that for so many years and then then you can understand why they do have outbursts and why they do get aggressive. It's right. because they're not healthy. Right. Right. No, it's very, yeah. you're very, very true. Yeah. If you think, I always compare it to humans. You know, if you think about a human who was, you know, taken from their mother at birth and then forced to live in highly unnatural conditions with no exposure to other humans, yeah. how would that individual develop and grow yeah. and thrive? Oh. You know, they wouldn't. No, you'd be traumatized yeah. your whole life. I have psychological issues and same goes mm -hmm. for like the monkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, they're not that different from us. No, you're yeah, yeah. absolutely. You're right. I mean, yeah. aren't, for example, chimps aren't like 98% that way. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 98.6% 98. 98. the same as human. That's pretty close. Which is, yeah. And obviously, you know, those few percentages are, somewhat significant when you look at a chimp they look very different from us they're not quite the same as us but so much is the same so much is the and same so many of those needs are the same yeah absolutely and, and i'm not just saying that you know this is this is proven there are studies you can look up you can look up the needs of chimpanzees you can look up the needs of monkeys and see what causes their cortisol levels to rise and indicate stress you right. know and we we know that interactions with humans do that with primates that's one way that we have scientific data to prove that interactions with humans are not good for other primates. Mm -hmm. So it's not just our opinion. This is fact. Right. Right. I could well, go on and on, but go, see, yeah. is there any, other, is there any other good comments? We have another one. Same. It's from the same person, uh, from the first comment. Uh, let's see to write, you are an outsider. The reason you got bit, 
Well, we didn't get bit. We were just talking about possibilities of people getting bit. You wouldn't want a stranger touching you. Neither do they. Humans think it's all right to do what you want to to them. Evidently, the monkey didn't like you or you or know you. I, I apparently, I guess they must have thought that that video we've you and I must have gotten bitten, but uh no we did not we we don't get near monkeys even though we love them as much and you're like a monkey expert a primate expert we don't get close to them <laughs> of course not and saying it's important to mention sanctuaries do not allow no people to no. handle the animals you know they are they are fed and cared for very carefully at a sanctuary yeah. from a distance there's very strict safety protocol for this reason yeah um, right. But this person's right that monkeys don't want to be handled or touched. And that's why I really cringe when I see them used as photo props. Um, you know, at, I've seen them at fairs, at, you know, performances and to see children posing with them. I go, oh, God, it's just so, so scary. And I would never, ever let my child <laughs> near a monkey like that because they're just too unpredictable. And no, no, absolutely. Dangerous. Yeah. Same. Same goes for when you even go out and you're out traveling and you see those mm -hmm. little. The, the people with the monkey on the shoulder and they'll charge you a few bucks. Please do never do that again. Mm -mm. You know, the last thing you want to do is no, get you're... bitten in Thailand or in whatever country you are and ruin your vacation. Well, sure. Not to mention you're contributing to that animal's, you know, captivity and right. horrible lifestyle exploitation, you know, all that. You're contributing to that when you spend your money that way. It right. exists because people will spend money right. to do that. Yeah. Yeah, so. obviously we've known that you know the whole animal trafficking it, it, it's a big business you know and right right after uh, human trafficking drugs and uh, guns it makes mm -hmm. the most amount of money with the least uh, repercussions absolutely yeah it's overwhelming isn't it when you think about it that way yeah absolutely it's what the fourth third or fourth largest illicit prof, uh, profit in the world I mean mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's it, you know it's I can't believe how it, it's gotten to this. And I mean, obviously it's just, you know, laws need to get a little more stricter and I'm sure things would change, but if you want to get rich, you get into animal trafficking and probably won't even see any jail time. Unfortunately, I'm not saying to do it, but it's, <laughs> well, what we've seen, we have seen some get pretty significant <laughs> punishments, which is good. But, you know, yeah. I hear a lot from people that, either own primates or even contribute to some of these exploitive practices. They say, you know, but I love animals. Well, I would say then I don't deny that. And I, I love that people love animals, but there is a good way and a bad way to love animals. And, you know, if you want to, to love monkeys, support those organizations that help monkeys, you know, right. support the sanctuaries. Once right. in a while, they might have a day where they open to the public and from a distance, you can see the animals, you know, um, these donor days they have so the donors can see what's going on and that and that's a great thing to support because then you can feel good that you're helping monkeys have better lives right. versus contributing towards you know take a photo with a monkey on your shoulder in costa rica or something and you're contributing to monkeys having worse lives i promise you yeah you know exactly. um so there's good ways and bad ways to do that right. um there's also you know uh, just like i had mentioned before on our website we also have information on how how people can help, what they can do to support primate protections, to support the right information getting out and and, and ending exploitation. Because that's just so important and that's the solution to all of this, truly. Yeah. Um, you know, exploitation with primates takes so many different forms in this country and some of them are dwindling and that's fantastic, but there's still more work ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah, I know last time we spoke about this new uh monkey act that's the uh, that's being proposed uh do we know any new new news on that is this monkey rodeos you're uh, talking about it was uh it was the new law that's supposed to pa pass the the monkey safety act or the it's kind of like the big the big cat public safety act i believe captive primate captive well there, okay primate. so there's there a go. captive primate safety act yeah, yeah i don't have an update for you right now but i know there's some really great animal protection groups working to get that okay um taken care of <laughs> yeah well let's hope that yeah. something, something like that eventually passes by to so that it can make it a little bit harder yeah. for people to to purchase uh these monkeys i mean of course there's always going to be the illegal trade out there but 
uh, you know, it, maybe it'll make it more difficult for people, for example, they're looking for vet care where vets might not even mm-hmm. take them in mm-hmm. because, you know, they can get fined for bringing in exotic animals. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if that's how it would work, but uh, mm-hmm. hopefully with something like that, that could maybe put a stop to or, or minimize at least a little bit of the, the monkey trade here in the U.S., Oh, for sure. We need federal protections against the private ownership of exotic species in general. I mean, there's a partner, there's a sister organization. It's like NAPSA. It's the Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance. I mean, their issues are very similar with big cats in this country. And to me, it's just like owning a monkey. It's wild to me that someone would want a tiger on their property, you know, but but it sure happens. And and we need to crack down on that. And I really do think, you know, if you look at the 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 improvements that have been made over over even just recent history when it comes to to primates specifically and their care in this country mm-hmm. um and the oversight and you know the laws that have changed we're we're headed on the right path right, right. there's right. still a lot ahead of us and a lot has been accomplished and so i do think over time and eventually we will reach a point where the private ownership of primates is outlawed federally yeah um but we just need to keep working until we get there and then of course you know that enforcement comes into question and grandfathering in all these pets and we'll get there just yeah. bit by bit right that's true very true yeah yeah